Welcome to the Vantage Point. Today's topic on the Melungeons was requested several times by viewers of my series on the origins of Appalachian and Southern surnames. This is a topic better suited to the Vantage Point. It's not part of the surname series, but as you'll see in a minute, it's sort of related. Back in the mid-1990s, I was looking for a publisher for my first book. It was about the cultural contributions of Germanic and Scots-Irish people, otherwise known as the Celts, who settled in the Upper South. My book was eventually published, first in 1998, then again in 2004, before Ancestry.com extended into the DNA realm. Back then, genetic genealogy was only thought about by a handful of scientists. In the absence of DNA analysis and with few Appalachian folk really knowing from whence their ancestors came, it was common for people to look at physical traits to assign an ethnic background. Red-haired people were thought of as Irish. Olive-complexioned people had to have some Cherokee blood, but the dark-skinned people who lived in Hancock County near the Virginia and Tennessee state lines were a genuine mystery. They were called the Melungeons. Some writers called them the Lost Tribe of Appalachia, so speculation was rampant. Were they lost Jews, Portuguese sailors, Moors, or Arabs? With the arrival of genetic genealogy, we can now determine the populations from which they were drawn. Before we get to their DNA, you should know that Melungeons have typical Appalachian surnames like Collins, Goins, Bunch, Evans, and Mullins, among others. They also speak Appalachian English and eat the same kinds of foods as the white folks over in the next holler. In fact, I have some of those surnames in my family tree, but I'm clearly not a dark-skinned person. My daughter has a perpetually tanned friend from that region. Her maiden name is Mullins. I was keen to find out her DNA profile. I'll tell you her DNA story in just a minute, but first, let me tell you about a scientific study that investigated members of the Melungeon community right there in Hancock County, Tennessee. The results of that study should put to rest any misgivings or mysteries surrounding a community of people who have been in the historic records since 1810. In 2005, Family Tree DNA, otherwise known as FT DNA, began a study on people in Hancock County who have historically claimed Melungeon ancestry. They also included a group of related people called the Carmel Indians. They live in the nearby areas of Kentucky. The study focused on mitochondrial and Y chromosome DNA profiles. These two lines represent the maternal and paternal lines of descent. I should point out that the study did not include an analysis of autosomal DNA. That's the test that tells us our ethnicity estimates. Our ethnicity estimates, that's a mouthful. The results of the study appeared in the April 2012 issue of the Journal of Genetic Genealogy, and here's what they found. All the few women tested belonged to the European haplogroup H. 48% of the men had R1b, a Western European haplogroup from the Atlantic coastal areas of Europe. R1b is found from Ireland to Germany and then down to Spain and Portugal. This may come as a shock to you, but Northern Iberia, which includes Spain and Portugal, is a Celtic region. Natives of Iberia can be dark or light-skinned. That doesn't explain the darker complexion of the Melungeon people, however. The origin of their pigmentation lies in Sub-Saharan Africa. Some 30% of the men carry an African Y chromosome. Only one man had a Viking DNA and another had a Native American paternal line. This is not a particularly difficult situation to explain in historical and sociological terms. Folks, it was not uncommon for there to be free Africans living in areas in the South, not just in the North, but they were also in the South. Indentured and free white women sometimes fell in love with a free man. Clearly, white men contributed their DNA to a community by illegally marrying African or mixed race women. It was still early in American history, so these interracial couples were not well received in society. They moved to the remote hollows of southern Appalachia to live life as they saw fit. Most of them were agrarian anyway, so they could live off the land. Through the generations, more admixing occurred. Today, autosomal tests can reveal the presence of sub-Saharan genes. Earlier, I mentioned my daughter's friend named Mullins. Her ancestry test revealed that she has no sub-Saharan DNA. She's not a Melungeon. 
She has very little Native American DNA, so she got her complexion from her Irish and Welsh ancestors. Folks, Native Irish and Welsh often have dark hair and skin. Think Colin Farrell and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Well, folks, I hope you found this brief talk interesting, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you again here on the Vantage Point. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.